let's say we have a class called resource with fields 1, 2 and 3 and these fields have some values which require either some heavy computations to calculate or they have to be extracted from external databases using some network IO. So creating this resource let's say is an expensive operation and we want to ensure that there is only one object of this type which is returned to everyone who requires it. So there are two ways to initialize this. In eager initialization, we'll just create a variable called rs, we'll call the constructor, we'll assign it to rs and then whenever someone calls in get me this expensive resource, we'll just return that single instance. But there could be use cases where you are not actually sure whether this resource will be used or not. So in that case, you have to use this concept of lazy initialization. We'll assign the variable rs to null, we'll not call the constructor. Only when someone calls in get expensive resource, only then we'll call the constructor and actually create the resource. Of course, we want to create only a single object of this. So we'll surround it with if rs is equal to null. So during the first call, rs will be null, a new resource object will be created and assigned to rs. And if second time someone calls this method, the rs will not be null anymore and the same instance will be returned to the caller. But this method of creating this resource lazily is not thread safe. So let's say we have two threads, thread one and two. They both call the method get expensive resource at the same time and they both check if rs is null at the same time. Of course at this point rs is null so both of them will go on and call the constructor to create that actual resource. Now we have two resource objects being constructed. That makes this method not thread safe. So the easiest way to make it thread safe is to introduce a synchronized keyword. So here we are adding a synchronized block where only one thread can come in, check if the resource is null and then create it. So in this case, let's say the same two threads call the method. In this case, only one thread will be allowed to enter the synchronized block. The other thread will be in waiting state. So let's say thread one got to acquire the lock. It will check if the value of rs is null. It is null, so it will create a new resource object. It will assign it to rs and it will return that object. Now thread two, which was waiting, will become runnable. It will acquire the lock. It will enter the synchronized block. It will see that rs is not null anymore. So it will not enter the if statement at all. It will directly return the value of rs. So now our get expensive resource method is both lazy loaded and it is thread safe. But it has a problem. Once the resource is actually initialized, even then the subsequent calls, let's say by thread three, four and five, all of them will try to acquire this lock. So even though rs is already initialized, all these subsequent threads or the subsequent calls, they enter the synchronized block, slowing our application. So the easiest way to fix this is just wrap the whole thing into another if statement. So here any thread before actually acquiring this expensive synchronized lock will check if the resource is still not initialized. If no one has initialized it, then you go inside the synchronized block. So now we have accomplished all three things. Using this if statement, we have ensured that the object is lazy loaded. Using the synchronized, we have ensured that it is thread safe to do so. And using this if, we have ensured that the subsequent calls, once the RS is initialized, are not slow. And this EDM is called double check locking because we are checking twice and locking once. And yet, instead of all this cleverness, this code is still not guaranteed to work. And that is because this statement of rs equal to new resource are actually three separate instructions. So the first instruction is to create an empty resource object with fields initialized as null. The second instruction is to call the constructor to actually initialize the fields with the right values. And the third instruction is to assign that value of that object to this variable of rs. And as per Java memory model semantics, it is not guaranteed that these three will occur in the same order. 
so jvm is allowed to reorder these instructions and it could happen that it initially constructs an empty object it will assign it to the variable rs so in this case rs is not null but it is an empty resource object so the fields within that object is null so let's say if thread 1 does these two things only and during that time there is another thread thread 2 which calls this method and it will check if rs is null and it is not null anymore because it has been assigned an empty resource object so thread 2 will wrongly assume that the constructor is called and all the fields have write values and it will mistakenly just return that instance and start using that instance and one way to fix this is to add the keyword volatile to our variable resource if we do this it will tell the JVM not to reorder those instructions so this is the whole code for double check locking implemented correctly and we can extend this concept to create a singleton out of it so very similar code as before we have this class of resource will ensure that the constructor is private so that no one else can call it will create a static factory method of get instance and will write the same code that we saw before of double check locking and the instance as earlier is defined to be volatile and is static in nature so this is how we implement singleton using double check locking but this code is quite verbose and sometimes a little difficult to understand and there is a simpler way to implement singleton and that is using a static holder pattern so here we have the same private constructor of resource we'll create a private class of holder and we'll have a static final resource inside it there is a typo here this needs to be a static class and jvm will ensure that this static class is loaded lazily so only when someone calls in get instance the first time it will load that actual static class of holder into memory and it will initialize this instance so this pattern has the same benefits as before it's lazy loaded and it is thread safe and the third and even easier way to create a lazy loaded singleton is to use enums so if our class resource is of type enum we can create an enum type called instance and this instance is not loaded until someone actually references it so those are the three ways to have a lazy loaded singleton double check locking using static holder pattern and using enums that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye